All right, so let us start then. And uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the virtual seminar of the International Institute of Physics. So it is a pleasure to introduce today Nathanael de Carvalho Costa from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Nathanael received his master's degree from the Federal University of Piauí in Brazil and his PhD at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, UFRJ. So after a few uh, couple of years of postdoc at UFRJ and also at CISA at the International School for Advanced Studies in Trieste, he came back to Rio and now he is the professor at UFRJ. Uh, his main scientific interests are in uh, properties of strongly correlated electron systems, in particular magnetism and the superconductivity. And today he will talk about his research uh, on quasi two-dimensional uh, compounds. So thank you very much, Nathaniel, for accepting our invitation and giving the talk today. Uh, now I pass the word to you. Thank you very much, Dimitri. And thank you also as well to Tiago for the invitation. And uh, it's a great pleasure being here and, and discussing the, 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 my, my projects, discussing the things that I have been researching. So uh, let me share my screen here. So uh, I hope everybody is, is looking my my screen right now. We can and see the slides, yes. Thank you very much. So uh, you can ask anytime. You don't need to, to wait. I I finish my presentation to, to give any, any questions. To. Um, so uh, today I will talk a, a little bit about uh, what I have been done recently over the past years about the role of the uh, about the role of the electron phone interaction in quasi 2D compounds. In particular, discussing um, some results for, uh, uh, for LEDs models, so in, on a theoretical point of view. Uh, I divide my presentation this way, or where first I will give you a, first introdu a short introduction about the, the, the issue. Uh, and then I will present the models and the methodologies that have been used, and then my results. So uh, about my results, I, I, I divided it in two ways, in two, in two big parts, actually. Uh, first, I will discuss some results for the hubbard holst model, discussing how CDW, antiferromagnetism, and superconductivity can compete in this kind of systems. And then after that, I will discuss a little bit more light polarons in SSH model and some possible roads to super to high TC superconductivity. Uh, and then my outlook. Uh, okay, so before I start, I would, I would like to put on parentheses here just to introduce my group here in UFRJ. So the group that I, I belong to here in UFRJ is composed by these five professors here, Teresa Paiva, Tatiana Rapaport, Raimundo dos Santos, Marcelo Silva Neto, and me. And so far, we have this main people here working with us, some of them as postdoc, other as PhD students, and others as masters and undergrad students. So this is our group here that we call as quantum matter at UFRJ. Uh, and obviously that we are open to discuss with anyone. So if you have, uh, if you are interested to collaborate with us and if you are, if you, if you have uh, uh, interest to work with strongly, co strongly correlated systems, it, it will be a very, it will be a pleasure to discuss and working with you guys. Okay. Uh, so, put in this parenthesis, so now I can uh, start my presentation discussing first uh, some properties about the electron phonon coupling. When we discuss about the electron phonon coupling, the first thing that comes into mind is, at least for me, that I'm from condensing matter, is uh, conventional superconductivity. So uh, here is, for instance, is carmelinones, the one that uh, have discovered superconductivity. And um, we know from the history that this, uh, the explanation from, from to, to this um, uh, phenomena comes from the uh, electron phone coupling. In fact, we have the, the formation of Cooper pairs that comes from the uh, effective attraction between electrons 
um, in the in our in 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 our compound. Uh, but at some point, uh, something that is less discussed in the literature is the uh, is, is the formation of a long range order for charge modulation. So uh, charge dense to wave or valence bond solids phases. And for instance, here is one example of, of another uh, way that you see the effects of the electron phono coupling in which we have a charge, the, the formation of the discharge modulation in our compound and the formation of discharge modulation lead, leads to a, a, a opening of a, a gap in the firm surface. So we have a, the formation of one uh, metal, we have a, a metal insulator transition and also one uh, cone anomaly at exactly the, 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 the two Fermi vector. Um, and the explanation for this kind of uh, phenomena for this electron phonon, and, uh, sorry, for this charge modulation uh, was given by Pyers and it's called in the literature as the Pyers instability. Basically, Pyers mentioned that if you have firm surface nesting and you create any kind of instability in your system, for instance, if you put one electron phone interaction, your system is unstable. Basically, you, 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 you cannot have one, one normal metal, you, you, you create this this long range order because your system is quite susceptible to any perturbation. In fact, it works only to, to, uh, to uh, in particular to 1D compounds, but uh, we, we can discuss it in more details. And it works in, in real compounds. It, it, it happens in real compounds. For instance, here is one example for, of STM measurements in this uh, quasi one dimensional, uh, uh, um, quasi one dimensional crystal. This is one organic crystal. Here it's difficult to see from the figure, but actually we have two chains here. One, uh, we have two weakly coupled chains. And when, when people start decreasing the, chip, the temperature, you create this modulation where you see here in this figure where the, the more clear spots are, the, we have more electrons and then the more uh, uh, not so clear spots, we have, have less electrons. So basically it happens for the same wave vector that we see for us here in the, in the ARPS measurements for 2KF that's exactly the, 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 the Pyers instability result that we see. Uh, we have also the, the formation of charge density wave for many other compounds, like for instance, transition metal decalcogenides. Uh, the transition metal decalcogenides, the, the history is a little bit more complicated because uh, we didn't see for this kind of compounds, uh, any electronic divergence in the, in the uh, for, for instance, for the electronic susceptibility, we don't see any uh, any evidence for firm surface testing. Uh, in, in some of them, we don't have metal insulator transition, even though we have a charge density wave. So it seems that this, this explanation that we saw for the occurrence of charge density wave uh, given by Pyers is not the whole history. So there's, there should be more behind it. Actually, for, for, for the case of the uh, transition method, this kind of the, this niobium selenate, uh, deselenate, uh, the, the, the explanation is given by a strong electron phono coupling for the exactly uh, wave vector that gives the CDW. Here, they can, they can obtain this from, uh, from uh, measurements of phono line width. Uh, but there should be many other, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, roads for, for explain chart dense wave. Uh, okay, so discussing more about transition metal decalcogenides, it's quite interesting that this kind of compounds, they present a very rich phase diagrams about uh, con con concerning to the, the, this phase, the CDW phase. For instance, here is one example of uh, this kind of phase diagrams in which uh, we see the formation of this, this charge order phase. 
uh, and that is destroyed when we put pressure or uh, copper uh, intercalation. And, the, and there is the formation of this uh, superconducting dome here, very, very similar to the cuprates. And, and we can see this in many, many other uh, compounds like titanium diselenide uh, or um, I forgot this, uh, no, it's here, uh, Santanio diselenide. Here, here, for instance, is the for we we see this destruction of the CDW and the occurrence of superconductivity by just adding disorder because uh, selenium and in, in sulfur they have basically the same properties. And uh, uh, and, and uh, this connection when we see this kind of phase diagram, we we can we can see the a clear connection with cuprates, for instance. And this connection is not is, is not uh, just accidental. Uh, this connection is really exists. There are many people that are trying to study, for instance, the occurrence of a pseudo gap uh, in this in this kind of phase diagrams here. So, if we are discussing about cuprates, so let's let's give you some words about it. So the cuprates also present charge dense wave. For instance, uh, here is one example of a phase diagram for the LCBO, LBCO, in which we see the formation here of a charge order just above the superconducting dome. But here for the cube rates, many people believe, and, and, and I belong to this, people that this charge dense wave probably comes from the electronic interactions. So it's not, it's not, the, it's not due to electron phono interaction. Even though we know that, for instance, uh, let me just put here this here. Even though we know that the electron phone interaction plays play one one crucial role for this for this kind of compounds. For instance, here I present you one one result that is, is known for a long time that the dispersion of the electrons uh, given by the ARPS measurements. The dispersion of the electron in cuprates is directly affected by the by the, the, the phonon coupling, the electron phonon coupling. Here, for instance, the, the arrows point out to the exact um, uh, 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 phonon energy for the apical uh, modes. Uh, so there is there is a coupling between the electron and the phonons that. That create that create this kink here. Um, very very recently in the science paper here, uh, the authors also show that using art measurements that probably there should be an attraction between electrons between far electrons far far, far away electrons, and this and this attraction should be due to electron phonon coupling. So um, uh, I, 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 I don't know exactly the details of this paper here. Maybe um, uh, I, have to, I have to read it in more details, but basically they, they, their, their main result is that, that the electron phonon interaction is probably the source of the, the the, the, of this attractive interaction between faraway electrons. And when we proceed discussing uh, the, 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 this, the, the, the occurrence of, or F, the effects of the electron coupling in quasi 2 d compounds, we cannot forget to discuss the graphene. For instance, here is one, 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 one study of the graphene, uh, for a monabinitu study of the graphene, using uh, effective uh, interactions. And they see, for instance, that the, 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 the interaction, the electron-electron interaction here is the U00, um, is, is around over, over the hopping is, is below 3.8. And this 3.8 is what we know in the literature for the critical point for the, the honeycomb lexi, which means that the graphene is not uh, is not one one uh, one antiferromagnet insulator because of the, the this interaction is not too big. 
Obviously, if the interaction is, is big, it can be one, one, one insulator or it can be on superconducting, I don't know. And this is what we see, for instance, in the, in the uh, twisted by layer graphene, because in, in the twisted by layer graphene, we have this uh, band that is very short, this, this flat band, almost like this nearly flat band in the, in the firm level. And in this case, in, the, in, in that we have this flat bands, uh, the kinetic energy is reduced, the cost of the kinetic energy is reduced, so the, the interactions is enhanced at some, at some point. So, so even though we have this very short, this, this weak interaction actually in graphene, for this kind of systems, we have uh, uh, they are important. This is why you have this moth formation, this moth like formation here, or the superconducting uh, dome in the twisted by the graphene. There are some studies I, uh, that, 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 that believe that the people that, prov that people provide some evidence that the superconducting state here in the twisted by layer graphene is probably due to the electron form interaction as well. Uh, although this is not uh, the whole history, people are still discussing about it. So at some point, uh, what I would like to, to mention here is that uh, usually the electron form interaction is not treated in many, many studies. Uh, usually people just ask about the effects of the, the, the Coulombin repulsion, disregarding the electron phone interactions, but they play a central role in many of these compounds. And uh, the, 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 the previous uh, examples were just to show that we have to, we have to take this kind of interaction into account. Uh, so the main question here of my, of my talk is try to ask you, or try to ask ourselves uh, how this electron phone interaction affect the properties of strongly correlated electronic systems. In particular, we are interested to know uh, or to, to investigate the occurrence of long range order like antiferromagnetism, charge ordering, superconductivity or valence bond solid phases. Uh, most of the studies that, that was, was performed for this kind of, of problems were done in or in 1D cases or using based, based methodologies like mean field. And here we are going to present you, uh, I'm going to present you some results that are not um, uh, based, you, uh, that, that's not biased, it was used in quantum Monte Carlo simulations, in particular to two kinds of systems, two kinds of models, the Hubbard Holstein and the Sucharif Higer Hubbard model. I will present you some details about it. Okay, so let's let's model. So basically what we do here, we try to understand the fundamental properties of this kind of systems, just look into the, 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 more, the most fundamental interactions. So for instance, here, let's, let's try to understand how we can do this. For instance, we can, we can disregard all the complexity of the, of the geometries so far. We can, for instance, uh, work in a square, let's say, just uh, to start. And we can, for instance, we can allow our atoms to, to, to vibrate, like, like having a quantum, or like a quantum, a quantum harmonic oscillator. And we have electrons here that these electrons can hop from one side to, to the other. And also if you have two electrons at the same orbital, we, they, they pay a price. They, 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 they can, re, they, you should pay a price for, for the Coulombin repulsion. So in this kind of system, we have both the repulsion. So here we will we, we call it as a Hubbard repulsion, as we have the indirect in, interactions mediated by phonons. So this kind of system, we can write uh, it's Hamiltonian like it. So this is what you call as the Hubbard Holstein Hamiltonian. Basically, this is this is uh, this this is written in the regular 
second quantitative formalism, uh, in which this first term here uh, be, uh, describes the electronic Hopin term. This this uh, third term here is uh, describes the local harmonic oscillators, and it is the uh, the electron phono interaction. This we can get it by basically expanding your interaction from your Abinitio uh, realistic Hamiltonian. And, and, and this is the Huber interaction. So this is the, our, fir, our, our first Hamiltonian that we like to analyze. The second case that we can also can uh, discuss here is also uh, is, is, is similar, but from, uh, from the, 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 the physical point of view is, is a little bit different. So again, we have Orlatsy and Orlatsy can vibrate the atoms, the, 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 the ions in Orlatsy can, can vibrate. But instead of you just put electrons to hop from on one side to the other, you, we, can, we can use this vibration of the, of the atoms to modulate the, the hopping between one orbital to the other. For instance, in this case, uh, when two orbitals are closer, the, the overlap between the orbitals are high, are, are, are larger. So the, the probability to hop is, is larger. So the, the, the hopping term is larger than the regular one. On the opposite, for instance, if the atoms are vibrating, they are in a, in a distance that are larger than the usual, the overlap is, is reduced. So the, the hopping term is also reduced. So for this case, the modulation uh, of your hopping term uh, disfavor your does not favor your your hopping. So this kind of systems, for instance, you can also add again the the uh, the, the repulsive contribution from when uh, when you have electrons at the same orbital, and this and this model is what we call as the Sucherif Higer Hubbard. Hubbard in the sense that we are also adding the Hubbard repulsion. So this is the Sucherif Higer model. Basically, it, it comes, uh, it presents one electron hopping term similar to the other one, but we have this uh, phonon degrees of freedom in the in the uh, in the sides that when you have more uh, orbitals closer or far. It modulates the hopping. So this is the this is what is described in this electron phone interaction here. Basically, when this relative distance is larger, so uh, you have uh, you, you can contribute more or or less to your hopping. Uh, Okay, so these are the two Hamiltonians that we are going to analyze here in this in this in this work, in this presentation here. Uh, we are interested to investigate uh, basically, oh, sorry, this is not correct, it's correct, no, this is the correct one. Uh, we are going to analyze basically uh, the structure factors, the, the correlation functions. So the structure factor is uh, similar to the peak of the, 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 the diffraction, no, the X-ray um, diffraction. Uh, and you are going to analyze, for instance, here the, 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 the structure effects for the density density correlation functions, the structure factor for the spin spin correlation functions, and also the, the structure factor from the bond bond. The bond bond here is basically if you are forming uh, singlets between your, your, your uh, near, nearest neighbor uh, electrons. And also, if since we are interested to analyze superconductivity, we are also going to analyze the pair susceptibility. So basically, if this if we have superconductivity, this this correlation function here should uh, increase and diverge at the critical temperature. Okay, uh, so given this, uh, I will not spend too much time discussing the, the methodologies. Basically, we use to, in, to analyze this kind of systems, we use uh, two different methodologies, both of them uh, quantum Monte Carlo simulations. 
the first one is the finite temperature uh, auxiliary field Monte Carlo simulation that basically we did it it, it uh, maps one quantum system in one classical system with one the one the one dimension more. And I will not discuss the details here, but this kind of methodology is some some somehow problematic in some in some for some of these uh, these models, in particular to the Holstein Hubbard Hubbard model, because it presents the the, the infamous there is uh, the infamous minus sign problem. Okay, and the other methodology that we use is uh, is the projective the zero temperature. Uh, also auxiliary field quantum Monte Carlo simulation, that this one also presents a sign problem, but we can, for some case, uh, use one different way to, to integrate the phonons, and then it, it doesn't present a sign problem uh, in, in some situations. So we combine these two methodologies, the finite temperature with the zero temperature, uh, quantum Monte Carlo simulations to, to, to study the properties of these two Hamiltonians. Okay, so let's discuss the results. So uh, the first part of my results is concerned to the competition between CDW and, and, and anti-ferromagnetism superconductivity in the hubbard holstein model. So this first Hamiltonian here. Oh, sorry, this first one here. Okay, so let's let's discuss what happens. First of all, we have to remember that when we are discussing, and here we are going to discuss the the the, the first part of this of this results, the, the, the results for the square let's say. We have to remember that the square let's at the half feeling it presents uh, the one, one nesting at the at the firm surface with the wave vector uh, pi pi. And uh, more than it, uh, it also presents one Van Hoff singularity. So if we remember the Peyer's insta instability, the Peyer's argument, it should have a CDW uh, instability. Uh, if we put, for instance, an electron phone interaction. Um, so, it, it, it basically is what, what is discussed, it was discussed in many, many papers in the, in, in the past. Because for, <laughs> this is quite interesting, because for 1D, 1D for the one chain, uh, we have one perfect nesting. This is the only case that we have a perfect nesting. Even though we don't have a CDW for any, kind for, for any electron phonon coupling. This is what uh, was presented many, many years ago by DMRG studies that presents a critical electron phonon interaction to, to leads to CDW formation. So, so in, in this case, the Peyer's argument is not, is not is not too is not completely correct. So it doesn't take in everything uh, into account in when, when discussing the CDW formation. When discussing the 2D case, the 2D cases was at the time that was uh, we started discussing this, we studying this kind of systems. The 2D case was uh, controversial because there were some papers in the literature uh, saying that similarly to the 1D case there should be one critical electron phone coupling to the occurrence of CDW, but there, are, there were also other papers saying that no, for any electron phone coupling, you have CDW formation. So in the literature, there, there, there are this kind of, of problems. And obviously that if we take into account the, the Peyer's argument, we should believe that no, for any electron phone coupling, you should have uh, CDW formation, but for the 1D case is not true. So then uh, there, is, there is this kind of controversy. So this was the first thing that we analyzed. So we have used this, uh, what we call here as the correlation ratio. So the correlation ratio for people that works with, quantum, with Monte Carlo simulation is something similar to the, to the Binder cumulants. 
is uh, is a quantity that uh, the crossing of this of of it as a function of the lattice size provides you the the critical point. So we we analyze this this quantity here the the the, the correlation ratio uh, projecting at the ground state. So the the, the crossing of it is provides the, the the critical point. So we we did this analysis for main different lattice sizes, and what we saw was basically that the extrapolation. Or in other words, the finite size scaling analysis of these crossing points leads to a zero or almost zero critical electron electron phonon coupling. So the the the, the point is not this is not this point six is in the right here. So point one or even zero here, depending on the the way that you do your your extrapolation. But basically, what we saw was that different from differently from the one D case, for the two D case, we have a, a CDW formation for any electron phonon coupling. For any electron phonon coupling at the square lattice leads to leads to CDW formation. And the reason for this kind of result, this kind of different result, is basically that. Uh, Different from the 1D case, uh, in, the, in the square lattice, we have this Van Hoff singularity. And the Van Hoff singularity also leads to one divergence in the, in the, in the electronic susceptibility, leading to, to uh, given, not, not given, but um, making your electrons much more susceptible to any, to any perturbation. So this is the, this is the reason for the difference between 1D and 2D. So in 2D, in 1D, we, we really don't have we need to a minimum of uh, coupling, electron phone coupling to have CDW while in 1D in 2D we don't need it for any electron phone coupling have CDW permission. So we, we repeated this analysis of this correlation ratio to different values of lambda. So lambda here is basically the electron phone coupling. For different values of lambda, different values of the electron, the, the electron lecture interaction, and we could provide uh, the boundaries of the different phases, both CDW and antiferromagnetic phase. So we could provide, for instance, one phase diagram for this kind of, of model. For instance, here is our, in our phase diagram, we see that if you have this electron electron interaction much larger than the electron phonon, you have one antiferromagnetic phase, what is expected, since we have uh, uh, more uh, spin, stronger spin spin correlations. Uh, if you go to an, one, one place that we have a larger electron phonon interaction, than electron electron ones, you have the formation of CDW, but at the middle, at the boundaries of these two phase, this is quite interesting. The, at the boundaries of these two phase, we have the formation of a, 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 a region that is not CDW, not antiferromagnetic. And in, in our analysis, uh, we saw that this is uh, one super, actually there are some evidence that this is one uh, extended wave superconducting phase. Um, so, but but it, it's it's not it's not true. Uh, how can I say? You cannot say this with with very. We are not too sure about it because we have a very bad sign problem here. So we could not get long. Uh, Long range order because we were not able, at least at this at this bound at this phase at the middle, we are we're not able to provide finite size scale analysis. Uh, but at some point, this result was in line with a, 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 another result, a very recent result, uh, that, that people use lung Furjov transformation uh, to analyze the, the 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 same model, and they see that at the middle. Uh, the phase, the region at the middle in between antiferromagnet and CDW, this region presents one D wave superconduct, superconductivity. So, um, 
it, it differs from our results, but that, that, that's fine. Uh, we, we, both both of them are not so so sure about the the symmetry, but we are sure that here we have uh, superconductivity at the middle. So the the competition between CDW and antiferromagnetism can lead to superconductivity. In fact, in, in a superconductivity that's not S wave uh, on site S wave actually. Okay, the the, the results of this. The, that, that this this uh, project is published in this in this paper here. So going further, so for, for instance, analyzing the honeycomb latency. So the honeycomb is a little bit more complicated because we know that, for instance, for the honeycomb, we change the electronic dispersion, and so this 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 vanishing density of states at the half a filling at least leads to a finite electron electron interaction to, to, to antiferromagnetism and a finite electron phonon coupling to CDW. This is already something that's known and, uh, and also leads to a suppression of pairing interactions, very pairing correlations, actually. And so uh, the, the, the change of the geometry, so, we, so uh, analyzing this kind of Dirac electrons changes everything. And again, here we we started analyzing at, at the same way that we did in the square lattice. So investigating the 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 correlation ratio, the, the crossing of this correlation ratio. And the first thing that we saw was that this for the for u equals zero, just for the pure Holstein model, we really have one critical electron phone coupling. But this critical electron phonon coupling depends quite drastically with the, uh, the, 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 the phonon frequency. So if the phonon frequency is, is very low, for instance, if you are going to the adiabatic case, you, you have one, one value for, the, for this critical uh, uh, electron phonon coupling, like here around 1.2, 1.3. And if we start to increasing this, this value of the electron phonon, sorry, this value of the phonon frequencies, you change the, 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 the value of the critical point that leads to CDW. Uh, so it, th there are this kind of uh, uh, dependency with the phonon frequency. Um, so uh, the same thing we, we saw when we analyze the, the transition to the, to the, to the antiferromagnetic side. So for instance, going to in the, in the opposite side in, in which you, the electron-electron interaction is larger than the electron phonon one, uh, we saw that the, the critical lines for antiferromagnetism change. So here, from here, from there, change very drastically if we change the electron, sorry, if you change the phonon frequencies. And uh, so it has a direct uh, uh, effect when we are discussing the, 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 uh, the properties of graphene, for instance, because if, if we do not take into account the, the phonon interaction, the electron phonon interactions in graphene, we, we may underestimate or overestimate the, the properties of the materials, in particular, when trying to obtain uh, longer range order, for instance, by applying you know, one stress or strain in graphene or, or by applying pressure, pressure and, and, so, and so forth. So uh, uh, what we saw here was basically that the, the, the critical points for the honeycomb latency is way dependent on the uh, on the phonon frequencies as we presented here. Uh, we also analyze it, but here we are not going to discuss this, this point. We are we also analyze uh, the, the, the universality class of this transition, but it, it is the regular one, the Grosnevue universality class. 
And similar to the square let's see, we also present one phase diagram for this case. But again, here is just the phase diagram for one value of the phonon frequency, because if we change this value of the phonon frequency, if we increase or if we decrease, we change drastically this, 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 this lines. For instance, here, uh, if I, I, I present you some one, one sketch of what happens if we reduce the value of the phonon frequency or if we increase the value of the phonon frequency. For instance, if we decrease, if we reduce to the anti-adiabatic anti limit, this region here, this semi-metal region is reduced. And so we have we have the, these two lines, the CDW and antiferromagnetic line uh, being closer and closer. Uh, while in the opposite side, if you go to the anti-adiabatic limit, uh, these lines start to be far, uh, being more, more, we increase the semi-metal region. The, these two lines are, uh, becomes more separated. Uh, so this is what happens. So again, we, these results may, may have some uh, direct effects on the graphene because Usually people disregard the analysis of the electron phonon coupling in graphene, but it shouldn't, in particular, if you are interested to investigate long range order. Okay, so these results are published in this paper here. You can see more, more details about it. So I, I will just complete my presentation presenting some some very short results about the, the occurrence of light polarons and the and VBS, the valence bond solid phase, in when we change the Hamiltonian, when we start to work in with the sucharif higer model. Actually, this, this result is part of the PhD uh, of the of, of one of our students here, Sebastian, that in this this project is, is still in, in progress. So uh, first of all, we have to mention that different from the Holston model, the, uh, the SSH model, it exhibits uh, light polarons. And so, so this is are some results from uh, people from UBC, from the Mona Bersu, uh group. And the occurrence of light polarons is very important if you are interested to understand high temperature superconductivity, at least from a point of view of uh, electron phonon coupling. The, the question is simple. How can we obtain high temperature superconductivity? You, you, one naive response is basically increasing the electron phonon coupling. But although increasing the electron phonon coupling increases the, the, the critical temperature. You also create heavy, heavy polarons. Your electrons is dressed with these phonons and your quasi particle is quite heavy. So you start in decreasing the temperature instead of increasing. This is why the conventional superconductivity can, cannot be larger than, than 20 or 30 Kelvin. But if you are, if you, if you can have uh, light polarons, so probably you can have high temperature superconductivity. And this is what these this, this people are presenting here in this paper, the, the possible occurrence of light polarons. Very recently, this model, the SSH plus the Hubbard term has been investigated by many groups, but they were interested more in the zero temperature. Uh, but uh, my group here, we were interested interested in the opposite limit, the, the finite temperature, because it's the properties because are the properties of the finite temperatures that can provides me the possible occurrence of this light polarons. So this is what we did. We analyzed the the, the SSH model. Uh, in particular, the bond-bond correlation functions at, at the half filling first, first of all, and to see the formation of this VBS uh, phase, the valence bond solid phase. So we analyze it, uh, we analyze the, the structure factor and how it 
in, in the occurrence of the uh, at the zero temperature, as we provide here in this finite size scale analysis. And also we, we obtain uh, the critical temperatures here, providing one data collapse of, this, of these points using uh, one, the universality class of the Q equal, equal four POTS model. And so we, we could obtain, for instance, the critical temperatures. And we obtain here, so our phase diagram for this SSH model in which we see that the critical temperature, at least for the BBS phase, is very high compared to the usual critical temperatures for CDW, for instance. Here, I just for a comparison, I present you what happens in the Holstein model. In the Holstein model, the critical temperatures, despite of the different lattices, the critical temperatures are not so high and more. They all of them present one maximum, and this maximum is, is corresponds to this crossover from light polar, polarons to have polarons. But in our case here for the SSH, we don't have this kind of maximum and more, the critical temperatures are much higher than the host ones. And so, so it, it's one, one hint it provides a strong evidence that we really have light polarons in this case. So the, the, the most natural question in this case is, what happens if we go away from half filling? Because here, this, this phase diagram is for the half filling. We obviously at half filling because of nesting, we don't have uh, superconductivity because the VBS is more strong is enhanced, the bond-bond correlations. But away from half feeling, the occurrence of this light polarons can enhance pair-pair correlation functions. Uh, so this is what we are trying to understand right now. So uh, we, I don't have results so far for this, for, for this case, but this is what we believe that this, the, 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 this light polarons can lead to or at least can, if, if it cannot explain high temperature superconductivity, it, it can at least enhance pair pair uh, correlation functions and, and helps to the occurrence of high temperature superconductivity. So this is why uh, we cannot also disregard the possible occurrence or at least the effects of the electron phonon coupling in cuprates. So that's it. Um, I finished my presentation, just present you some outlooks here. So uh, we, there are many other things that we can do in this, in this, um, in, in, in this area. For instance, uh, the, first, the first of all is the, uh, the emergence, analyze, investigating the emergence of uh, superconductivity away from half feeling in using uh, this kind of uh, SSH phonons, these phonons that, that modulates the, the hopping. Uh, and also, we, we can also try to understand many other features like frustration. For instance, the, 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 uh, titanium disulfur, yes, titanium disulfur, that is one frustrated latency. Uh, is one of the uh, candidates to spin liquid. And this is in this present CDW and this present when, when, you, when you put pressure and this presents a uh, strong electron phonon coupling. So uh, the, the occurrence of frustration also is also something interesting. Also, for instance, trying to understand what happens when, we, when our electron phonon coupling has a momentum dependency. And also, for instance, how the spin orbit interactions that is present in all of this or in most of this uh, transitional metal decalcogenides, how the, the occurrence of this, uh, this spin orbit interaction affect the occurrence of this charge uh, ordering. So there are many other things that, that, that can be done here and that deserves some explanation. 
So this is what I would like to present you. So thank you very much. And if you have questions, you, I will be happy to, to, to discuss with you. Oh, thank you very much, Nathanael, for this great talk and for very interesting results. And now we can pass to questions. Yeah, let's thank Nathanael for his great talk. And I remind you that there are many uh, options to ask questions. You can raise your hand, you can uh, write your question in the chat. If you're following us on Zoom, you can also post your question. Uh, if you're following us on YouTube, you can post your question on YouTube and we'll pass it to Nathanael. So maybe let me start with a question. Uh, and my first, my question is about uh, the side problem that you mentioned. So you you, you even show uh, show the publication that said that they resolved uh, the side problem. So can you comment a little bit? So what's the solution? Okay, uh, let me just put there. I think it's by your collaboration. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So uh, this is a very important question because uh, when 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 we work with this kind of methodologies, in particular auxiliary field quantum Monte Carlo simulations, uh, we we use as our as our um, statistical way this 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 product of two determinants. And this product of two determinants is not uh, is not positive definite definitive de definite uh, in principle. So the problem this is this is what we call as the sign problem is, is when your statistical weight is negative that it doesn't make sense. Uh, so in this kind of season, in particular to the Holston model Holston Hubbard model, it presents a very bad sign problem. So this is why we cannot, for instance, in our results, we cannot go uh, uh, deeper in this region and try to, to understand uh, which phase we have here. Uh, we, 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 are we were able to provide the, the boundaries of the antiferromagnetic, the CDW, but not inside of this region, because inside of this region is the worst region for the sign. So it's almost impossible to, pro to, to get results for larger systems. What, 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 what people did years ago, in particular, uh, people from the group of so Sandro Sorella, the group that I, was, I, was, I belonged some years ago, uh, was that they could provide one solution to the sign problem for this case, for a very specific region. So uh, they integrated out the phonon fields. Uh, and and so, so having just electronic, uh, electronic degrees of freedom. And they could provide that first for a, a given region of the, of, of the phase diagram in particular to this region here in which u is larger than lambda, all of this, all, all of this triangle here, we don't, you don't have sign problem. So okay, they solved the problem, but just for half of the elect, half of the phase diagram, for this other half here, we still have sign problem, and this is why we we are not able to provide you uh, with with total. Uh, 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 we, we have 100% of, of, of belief that uh, in this region we have superconductivity because this region is in the, in this, in the region that we have sign problem. Uh, so the solution is just for the solution is just for this side of the phase diagram. Okay, thank you. So uh, the I see two questions in, in Zoom. So first from Eric Riner. Please, Eric, ask your question. Thank you very much for the talk. I have a, a lot of questions, but I try to be short. So on the square lattice, which you were on previously, uh, it was just to understand the plot here. So the, the dashed line in the middle, this corresponds to, is it something like a mean field estimate? Uh, what, what does it correspond? I'm not as used. Uh, I'm, I'm not as familiar with the Holstein part of the Hubbard. So, yeah, yeah, so you, you are right. This this uh, dashed line corresponds to the mean field because in the mean field, 
uh, basically your electron electron phone interaction is mapped in one attractive interaction, mm -hmm. and and this this dashed line corresponds to the case in which uh, ab above this above this case ab ab above this line you your effective interaction is larger than zero, so you have rep repulsive interaction, mm -hmm. so you you are in the antiferromagnetic side. And below this, you you have attractive interaction, so you can lead to CDW interaction or superconductivity. Oh. Uh, so this is this is you are right. This is uh, the, the the dashed line is the mean field result. So the the short density wave uh, in the lower right, I could really on some level see it as uh, the attractive U. So Hubbard, or is it so just? Yes, Completely or it's slightly modified with this phonon interaction. So I, I didn't understand it well. Uh, it's just the so I can really see the short sensitive wave phase as the the short sensitive wave for an attractive U uh, on some level. That's oh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. The point is that for in the half feeling for the attractive Herbert model, uh, for instance, at the half feeling, the CDW and the superconducting superconducting phase are degenerated. Mm. So both of them uh, corresponds to have the same energy at the half feeling. Mm -hmm. So this is why I, I can put here CDW without any problem. But they... And then one thing, so I didn't completely still understand the argument for why you believe it to be superconductivity based on the sign problem, but, but it's lack of my, perhaps my understanding of quantum Monte Carlo. But because when I look at the, the phase diagram, uh, it makes me think of, uh, Perhaps you're familiar with bond order wave by Nakamura for the extender Hubble model. It has a very similar shape. It's 1D, this system, and I it's a, a competition between antiferromagnetism and short density wave. That's okay, okay. Idea. Thank you very much for your question. I, I, I was looking here if I had my, I, I put the, the, the graph at the final of the, the presentation, but I didn't, sorry. Uh, but we, we, at, in this region, we investigated how this quantity here, let me put it here, uh, how the, the pair susceptibility behaves mm. uh, as a function of the temperature. Mm. So we are not able to provide the finite size scale analysis, but we, are, we were able to fix one value of the lattice size mm. and see how this quantity behaves as a function of the temperature. And what we saw was that at, in this region here, both D wave and S standard, extended, extended uh, S wave, both of them were enhanced. They, they increased a lot in this region as a function of the temperature. When we reduced the temperature, it increased, increased, but we couldn't reduce too much the temperature because of the sign problem. But the increasing of these quantities provides some evidence that probably they may diverge at the zero temperature, or at least at, at a critical temperature, in fact. So, so the main question is, of course, which one diverges the most strongly and then becomes... Yes, yeah, exactly. And what we saw was that the S wave was the one that diverged, really. But this, this is in contrast with this other uh, paper here. Uh, in, in which they, they do uh, lung fissure off. They basically map, they, they integrate out all of the formal degrees of freedom, mapping these as electron electron interactions. Yeah. And what they saw was that the D wave was the one that at the, at the uh, ground state, that is the one that really is the strongest. Uh, okay, so, but. Uh, these results were performed to a very small lattice size compared with us. So it's difficult to, 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 to say which, which, uh, which is the symmetry of the, the superconductivity, but we agree with one thing, that probably this region we have superconductivity. Okay, great. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Eric, for questions also. And we have a question from another Eric. Eric Andrade, please go ahead and ask the question. Okay, thanks. So thanks, Nathaniel, for your very nice talk. So I have a curiosity. Can you do simulations away from how feeling, I mean, so you could, or is it too hard because of the quantum of the minus problem? 
Okay, uh, very nice question. Thank you, Eric. Uh, in, for all of these Hamiltonians that I presented, both a Holstein or a Hubert Hol Holstein or a SSH, SSH Hubert, I can perform simulations away from half feeling. This is not a problem. Uh, but depending on the on the, the the Hamiltonian, I can have or can have a sign problem. For instance, uh, let me try to see here. Um, for the for the Herber model, sorry, not not the Herber model. For for the Holstein model only, so mm -hmm. excluding the the, the the Herber term, I don't have sign problem for any feeling. I can I can simulate. Any, any uh, the the whole the module for any feeling, and I don't have sign problem. But if I put a, like, uh, the Herbert term, I have sign problem for any feeling. So sure. this is the point. So, so uh, uh, but my question is, I mean, if you move away from half feeling, can you really see superconductivity? I mean, does it enhance superconductivity compared with charge dense wave or? or? Is still there, still the generating the yeah. Uh, it, that, that, that's a very nice question. So for the Holstein model, this was performed recently, and there are the really uh, superconductivity away from half feeling. So we, we you have one kind of a uh, increasing like a uh, forming a dome uh, mm -hmm. away from half feeling uh, for the Holstein model. For the SSH, there is no result so far, at least no unbiased result. There are some biased results. But, uh, using variational Monte Carlo, but uh, but uh, for for exactly ones, there are no no uh, results doing this. But there are there are there one believe that it presents um, uh, also superconductivity. Okay. So and and uh, just last question: in the if you go to the honeycomb lattice, I mean, is do you see superconductivity there if you change? Omega zero, or, or it's you don't we always see just charge density wave and and nail. Okay, nice, nice. Uh, I, ha I have I have in order to, to reply to, to respond to you, I have to just emphasize that my phase diagram here it was performing to weak and intermediate coupling. So here the electron funnel coupling, the U are not larger than the A. And for this uh, region here, we don't have we don't have superconductivity uh, for 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 any coupling for any uh, 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 phonon frequency. Mm -hmm. But at the strong coupling, and there there is a paper doing this. There's a PRL. I can I can send you the the reference later. Mm -hmm. uh, the, at the strong coupling, really. Uh, these two phase, these two lines, the CDW and antiferromagnet, they are closer and closer. So the competition between them can may create uh, bipolarons, and these bipolarons can lead to superconductivity. This is the, the the main result of the of this other paper. But I I, I couldn't go to this region because uh, it's a region that's almost impossible to my simulations. Okay, so thanks, Antonio. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, do we have more questions to the speaker? So I have a, another short question. So the reason for you to look at these two models, uh, so one is, seems to be a simpler one, and the other one has more details. Is it because the, the one is easier to analyze on, on Mobile Monte Carlo? Uh, no, no, both of them are are not too difficult to implement. Actually, when when discussing, for instance, the SSH, um, one thing I have, noticed is anisotropy. I'm not sure you mentioned that when you talked. So there's, no, there's, there's, there seems to be anisotropy in this in this second model, right? The SSH. Yeah. No. The, the difference. The main difference between of them is basically that. Uh, in one of them, your phonon lives, let, let, let's put it this way, the phonon lives in the side for the Holstein, while in the other one, the phonon lives in the bones. So uh, in, in, in the first one, the phonon creates one, one, one potential that is, can be attractive or repulsive to, to you put electrons. Uh, and the other one, you modulate the, 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 the 
a connected term. You modulate the, the hopping. Uh, the, both of them are, are very similar to, to implement numerically. The only difference is that this SSH is a little bit more difficult because, because we have more degrees of freedom. We have two, two kinds of phonons, like phonons in X and Y direction, but uh, at some point they are similar in, 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 a, in a technical point of view. I see. Okay, yes, I understood. Thank you very much. So I do not see further questions. Uh, so then uh, let us thank Nathanael again. And uh, many thanks for accepting our invitation for giving this great talk today with us. And uh, I invite everyone to come back in one week with more seminars. Thank you. Thank you very much.